urine analysis. Kidneys play a major role in both filtration and reabsorption of necessary substances. Consequently, urine analysis is an extremely valuable tool for demonstrating pathological conditions in the excretory system and as an index for general metabolic condition of an individual. Routine urine analysis includes physical examination for volume, color, odor, appearance and specific gravity. Chemical examination for glucose, proteins, ketones, bilirubin, urobilinogen, nitrate, leukocyte esterase, pH and blood. Microscopic examination of urine for cells like the red blood cells, white blood cells, epithelial cells, casts, crystals, bacteria, yeast and parasites. The first morning sample. Urine sample obtained from the first urination of the day is the most concentrated sample and best for routine examination. The random sample. Urine sample collected at any time of the day. It is most convenient and can also be used for chemical and microscopic examination. The 24 hour urine sample. It is a sample collected over 24 hours. It is used for the quantitative tests, especially for quantitative determination of protein and creatinine clearance. The clean catch urine sample. It is used for microbiological culture and routine analysis. Around 10 ml of freshly voided clean catch midstream urine should be collected in a clean, wide mouth, dry container. A morning specimen is preferred as it is most concentrated. If samples cannot be tested within two hours of collection, refrigerate the specimen immediately and allow it to return to room temperature before testing. Samples can be stored at 2 degrees to 8 degrees centigrade for 24 hours. Long standing of urine sample at room temperature can cause false results due to growth of bacteria, breakdown of urea to ammonia by bacteria, leading to an increase in the pH of the urine. And this may cause the precipitation of calcium and phosphates. Oxidation of urobilinogen to urobilin, destruction of glucose by bacteria, Lysis of red blood cells, white blood cells and casts. Crystallization of chemicals in acidic and alkaline urine. Please note, all urine samples should be handled cautiously, wearing gloves and masks as they are potential biohazards. Physical examination. Physical examination of urine is the first part of urine analysis. It is done by direct observation and it gives a hint for the subsequent urine analysis. For example, white turbid urine sample may suggest the technician the presence of leukocytes that is pus cells and or epithelial cells in microscopic examination and presence of nitrite on a chemical examination. We begin with color. Color of normal urine varies from pale yellow, that is straw color to yellow. Urine gets its color from the pigment urochrome, urobilin and uroerythrin. Pale to colorless urine may indicate large fluid intake, diabetic mellitus and diabetes insipidus. Dark yellow or brown red urine may indicate concentrated urine due to dehydration, fever or certain medication. Yellow-brown or beer-brown color may indicate the presence of bilirubin. This is also confirmed by looking at the yellow foam or the green foam by shaking the sample. Clear red may indicate presence of hemoglobinuria, that is, Presence of hemoglobin in the urine due to intravascular hemolysis. 
cloudy red or smoky red color may indicate hematuria that is presence of red blood cells in the urine on standing the red cells in hematuria may settle down and so the urine becomes clear with a red deposit dark brown color urine may contain porphyrins melanin homogenic acid which is associated with abnormal metabolism of tyrosine milky urine may contain fat cysteine crystals and many white blood cells or amorphous phosphates interfering factors which result in abnormal urine color formation are certain food stuffs and medication food like beets will give red color drugs such as vitamin b12 and riboflavin will give a bright yellow color to urine rifampicin gives reddish orange color to urine iron salt will give dark color to urine sulfonamides give rusty yellow or brownish color therefore when abnormal colored urine is observed it is important to ask the patient what kind of food he consumed in the last 24 to 36 hours and whether he used drugs or not next odor normally freshly voided urine from healthy individual has a faint aromatic odor which comes from volatile acids like ammonia normally found in urine an ammonical odor is present in long standing urine due to breakdown and conversion of urea into ammonia by the action of bacteria a foul or an offensive smell could be due to an old specimen pus or inflammation a sweet fruity odor results due to ketones that may be due to diabetes mellitus vomiting starvation or strenuous exercise a maple syrup like odor is present in maple syrup urine disease thus the name fishy odor is seen in tyrosinemia appearance freshly voided urine specimen is normally clear and transparent it may be turbid due to white blood cells or epithelial cells that occur due to urinary tract infection red blood cells due to infection or stones high number of bacterial cells or yeast cells amorphous urets in case of gout and leukemia a cloudy urine could be due to concentrated urine genito urinary tract infection phosphates urets or uric acid chemical examination chemical analysis of urine is important for detection of many diseases chemical changes of urine can indicate disease at an early stage routine chemical examination includes chemical testing for the ph protein glucose ketones occult blood bilirubin urobilinogen nitrite leukocyte esterase and specific gravity urine dipstick is a rapid method to assess the chemical composition of a urine sample it is a narrow plastic strip which has several squares of different colors attached to it each square on the strip is impregnated with a reagent for a different analyte along with a color indicator the colors generated on each reagent square after dipping the test strip in a urine sample vary according to the concentration of the analyte present reference for color changes is posted on the plastic bottle container of the urine test strips and the result can be easily interpreted by placing the strip next to the container and comparing its color changes to the reference provided ph normally freshly voided urine ph ranges from 5 to 7 in healthy individuals and an average of 6 the renal system regulates ph of blood that is keeps ph of blood at 7.4 plus minus 
This is done by absorption or release of hydrogen ion. pH of urine can be measured by using different techniques such as litmus paper, nitrazine paper, dipstick or glass electrode. Alkaline urine that is a pH of more than 6 can be seen in urinary tract infection, renal failure, vomiting or anorexia nervosa, alkalosis or a vegetarian diet. While an acidic urine with a pH of less than 6 can be found in diarrhea, malabsorption syndromes, diabetic ketoacidosis, dehydration, fever or starvation, or a high-protein diet. Glucose The test is specific to glucose using glucose oxidase peroxidase method. Glucose oxidase catalyzes the formation of gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide from oxidation of glucose. A second enzyme, peroxidase, catalyzes the reaction of hydrogen peroxide with potassium iodide chromogen to oxidize the chromogen to colors ranging from green to brown. The clinical application is for detecting glycosuria as seen mainly in diabetes mellitus, endocrine disorders like acromegaly, Cushing syndrome and hyperadrenocortism. The limitations are ketones reduce the sensitivity of the test. Moderately high ketone levels may cause false negative for specimen containing small amount of glucose. It only measures glucose and not other sugars like lactose, galactose, fructose or other reducing substances. Low levels of glucose may not get detected. The confirmatory test is copper sulfate test for reducing sugars. Bilirubin The test is based on coupling of bilirubin with diazotized dichloranaline in a strongly acidic medium. The color ranges through various shades of tan. Clinical application is for detecting increased direct bilirubin which correlates with urobilinogen and serum bilirubin levels. The limitations include prolonged exposure of sample to light can produce a yellow-orange to red color response which can interfere with the interpretation of results. It only measures direct bilirubin and does not pick up indirect bilirubin. Other tests are bile salt by Hayes test and bile pigment by modified Fouché's test as they are sensitive to very small amounts of bilirubin in urine. Serum test for total and direct bilirubin is confirmatory. Ketone This test is based on the development of color ranging from buff pink to purple when acetoacetic acid reacts with nitroprusside. Clinical application for detecting diabetic ketoacidosis, non-diabetic ketoacidosis as found in starvation or extreme febrile state and lactic acidosis. Limitations are, it only measures acetoacetate, not the other ketone bodies. High specific gravity and low pH urines may give false positivity. Other tests include Rothera's test for confirmation and serum glucose measurement to confirm diabetic ketoacidosis. Specific gravity Specific gravity of the urine is used as a measure of the total amount of solids dissolved in it, which gives the concentrating and excretory power of the kidney. Specific gravity can be measured using urinometer, refractometer or the reagent strips. The normal range of specific gravity is 1.003 to 1.035. The strip test is based on the pKa change 
of certain pretreated polyelectrolytes in relation to the ionic concentration. In the presence of an indicator, colors range from deep blue green in urine of low ionic concentration through green and yellow green in urines of increasing ionic concentration. The clinical significance is in diagnosis of diabetes insipidus and in chronic renal failure cases where the specific gravity is fixed in the range of 1.010 as the kidney loses its capacity to concentrate or dilute urine. Limitations Presence of moderate protein may cause elevated readings. It does not measure the non-ionized solutes like glucose. Blood This test is based on the peroxidase-like activity of hemoglobin, which catalyzes the reaction of diisopropyl benzene, dihydroperoxidase and 3355 tetramethyl benzidine. The resulting color ranges from yellow through green. Very high levels of blood may cause color development to continue to blue. The color change indicates free hemoglobin. The appearance of green spots on the test pad indicates presence of intact erythrocytes. Clinical significance is diagnosis of hematuria as seen in nephritis or trauma, hemoglobinuria in hemolysis, myoglobinuria in rhabdomyolysis. The limitation being, it cannot distinguish between the above disease processes. The interference from certain oxidizing contaminants like hypochlorite and microbial peroxidases may give false positive results. The other tests are urine microscopic examination and urine cytology. pH the test is based on the double indicator principle that gives a broad range of colors covering the entire urinary pH range. Colors range from orange to yellow and green to blue. The limitations being bacterial overgrowth in the specimen may cause a marked alkaline shift because of urea conversion to ammonia. The runover effect of protein pad on pH indicator pad. Too much urine on the strip may cause low pH as acid buffer from the protein will run over the pH area, lowering the pH levels. The other tests are blood gases to determine the acid base status. Protein. At a constant pH, the development of any green color is due to presence of protein. Colors range from yellow through to yellow-green, green and green-blue for positive reaction. Protein in urine could be due to several reasons like functional causes as in muscular exertion, pregnancy, orthostatic proteinuria, fever or hypertension. Renal and post-renal causes as found in glomerulonephritis, nephrotic syndrome, renal tumor or infection, cystitis or urethritis. The clinical application is to diagnose proteinuria and nephrotic syndrome. The limitations being visibly bloody urine may cause falsely elevated results. Since test is highly pH dependent, Highly alkaline urine may give false positive result. Cells suspended in normal urine can produce a false high estimation of protein. In such case, the test should be repeated with centrifuged urine. It is more sensitive to albumin than other proteins like globulin. Benz John proteins. The other tests include the sulfosalicylic acid turbidity test and the urine protein electrophoresis. Urobilinogen The test is based on a modified Ehrlich's reaction in which P-diethyl amino 
benzaldehyde in conjunction with a color enhancer reacts with uranobilinogen in a strongly acidic medium to produce a pink red color urobilinogen is normally present in urine at a concentration up to 1 mg per deciliter a result of 2 mg per deciliter represents the transition from normal to abnormal the clinical application is in detecting increased urobilinogen which may indicate liver disease congestive heart failure or hemolytic anemia decrease or absence as seen in bile obstruction limitation the interference from substances like p amino salicylic acid and sulfonamides prolonged exposure of specimen to oxygen cannot detect absence of urobilinogen the other tests are serum levels of total and direct bilirubin levels ehrlich's test nitrite the test depends on the conversion of nitrate derived from the diet to nitrite by the action of gram negative bacteria in urine at the acid ph of the reagent area nitrite in the urine reacts with p arsenalic acid to form a diazonium compound which gives a pink color please note pink spots or pink edges should not be interpreted as positive result the clinical significance is to detect gram negative bacteriuria the limitations are a negative result does not rule out significant bacteriuria false negative results may occur with shortened bladder incubation of the urine sensitivity of the nitrite test is reduced for urines with high specific gravity the confirmatory tests are leukocyte esterase test the urine microscopic examination for bacteria and urine culture leukocytes granulocytic leukocytes contain esterases that catalyze the hydrolysis of pyrrole amino acid ester to liberate 3 hydroxy 5 phenyl pyrrole this pyrrole then reacts with diazonium salt to produce a purple product the clinical significance is detecting pyuria and acute inflammation the limitations being elevated glucose concentration may cause decreased test results positive results may occasionally be due to contamination of the specimen by vaginal discharge confirmatory tests being urine microscopic examination for white blood cells and bacteria and urine culture biological reference intervals for normal urine is shown here on the chart color of the normal urine is pale yellow to amber specific gravity is 1.003 to 1.030 ph 4.5 to 8 protein is negative glucose negative bilirubin negative ketones negative blood negative leukocyte esterase negative nitrite negative urobilinogen is less than 2 units per deciliter read time while taking the readings of the strips proper read time should be followed which means the result for each of the parameters should be read at the prescribed time as given by the manufacturer here it is as follows glucose and bilirubin at 30 seconds ketone at 40 seconds specific gravity at 45 seconds ph and protein from 60 seconds to 2 minutes urobilinogen blood nitrite at 60 seconds and leukocytes at 2 minutes linearity or reportable range it is the sensitivity of the test strips as semi quantitative values the result values more or less than these levels may not be accurate the linearity levels will vary as per different manufacturers the values here are as shown for glucose it is 75 to 2000 mg per deciliter bilirubin 
is 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 milligram per deciliter. Ketones are 5 to 160 milligram per deciliter. Blood is 10 to 200 RBCs per microliter or 0 0.015 to 0 0.62 milligram per deciliter of hemoglobin. Proteins are 15 to 2000 milligram per deciliter. Nitrites 0 0.06 to 0 0.1 milligram per deciliter. Leukocytes 5 to 500 cells per microliter. Test procedure. Equipment required. Multiple reagent strips for urine analysis. Color chart on the bottle label. Urine analysis control strips, watch or timer and a good light source. Storage and stability of the reagent. Store the reagents in a cool dry place. Do not refrigerate. Keep out of direct sunlight and protect against ambient moisture and heat. Procedure Follow standard precautions while handling urine samples. Work areas and specimen containers should be free of detergents and other contaminating substances. Mix the sample well before testing. Remove a strip from the bottle immediately before testing. Replace the cap tightly after removing the reagent strips. Without touching any test area of the strip, dip the strip in the sample and remove immediately. Prolonged contact may result in dissolution of the reagents. Remove excess urine by running the entire length of the strip along the edge of the container. Hold the strip horizontally to prevent possible mixing of reagents from adjacent areas. Avoid contaminating the hand with urine. Avoid touching the strip to the color chart to prevent contamination. Read the strips at appropriate time as specified on the label under a good light source. Do not read the strips in direct sunlight. Microscopic examination of urine. Microscopic examination of urine helps to analyze the cellular and non-cellular elements that are insoluble and have accumulated in the urine following glomerular filtration and during the passage of fluid through the tubules and the lower urinary tract. It also serves as a confirmatory test in case of erythrocytes, leukocytes and bacteria which are also detected by multiple reagent strip method. Principle Insoluble cellular and non-cellular elements in urine are detected by direct visualization under the microscope. Sample Around 15 ml of freshly voided clean catch midstream urine should be collected in a clean dry container. A morning specimen is preferred. Vaginal contamination in females will give rise to confusing results. Hence, collection of midstream clean cat sample is very important. If samples cannot be tested within two hours of collection, refrigerate the specimen immediately and allow it to return to room temperature before testing. The sample can be stored at 2 to 8 degree for 24 hours. Grossly contaminated samples should be rejected. Equipment Clean dry glass lights, cover slips, test tubes, microscope, centrifuge. Procedure Follow standard precautions while handling urine samples. Label the test tube with the patient ID to which the sample is to be transferred. Mix the sample well before testing. Transfer 10 to 15 ml of sample to a test tube and centrifuge at a speed of 1500 rotation per minute for 10 minutes. After centrifugation, concentrated sediment is collected at the bottom with a clear supernatant. Pour off the supernatant till a volume of 0.2 ml is left inside the tube. The sediment is resuspended in the remaining urine by flicking the bottom of the tube. 
A drop of resuspended sediment is poured onto a glass slide and a cover slip is placed on it. The sediment is first examined under low power to identify crystals, cast, squamous cells and other large objects. Then examination is carried out at a high power to identify cells and bacteria. Results and Interpretation The various types of cells and casts are usually described as the number of each type found per average high power field. The presence of crystalline and amorphous material is indicated as 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus or 4 plus. The presence of bacteria yeast is also reported as 1 plus, 2, 4 plus. Any other microscopic findings such as spermatozoa, fat bodies, parasites like trichomonas and schistosoma, tumor cells etc. are noted under the column others. Red blood cells or hematuria Appearance Red blood cells in urine may be seen as intact, normal shaped or small yellow disc darker at the edge of the size 8 microns. Crenated with spiky edges and reduced diameter of 5 to 6 micron, usually in concentrated urine. Swollen or as thin hollow circles with increased diameter of 9 to 10 micron and resembling yeast cells. Dysmorphic RBCs or poorly shaped RBCs in urine suggest renal origin rather than the lower urinary tract. Clinical Implication Red blood cells may be found with glomerular damage, kidney trauma, urinary tract stones, upper and lower urinary tract infection, tumors along urinary tract or acute tubular necrosis. Interference Factors that can result in falsely high number of red blood cells would be in menstrual bleeding, following traumatic catheterization or due to some drugs like aspirin or anticoagulant therapy. White blood cells or leukocytes or pus cells. Normal range being 0 to 2 white blood cells per high power field. Appearance Usually the white blood cells are seen in urine are granulocytes. These may be seen as intact or as clear granular disc, 10 to 15 micron in size, degenerated or distorted in shape, or as clumps of numerous degenerated cells. The presence of many leukocytes, especially in clumps, indicates a urinary tract infection. Clinical Implication Increased number of leukocytes in urine are seen in cases of urinary tract infection, renal diseases, bladder tumor, epithelial cells. There are three main types of epithelial cells which can be shed in urine. The renal tubular epithelial cells which are usually larger than granulocyte and contain a large round or oval nucleus and normally appear in the urine in small numbers. Transitional epithelial cells from the large drainage structures, that is the renal pelvis, ureter or bladder, have more regular cell border, larger nuclei and smaller overall size than squamous epithelial cells. And then the squamous epithelial cells from the skin surface or from outer urethra can appear in urine. They represent possible contamination of the specimen with skin bacteria. Clinical Implication Presence of epithelial cells in large number, mostly renal type, may be seen in acute tubular damage or acute glomerulonephritis. The presence of large number of epithelial cells with large number of leukocytes and mucus threads indicate urinary tract infection. Casts Formed by precipitation of proteins and aggregation of cells within the renal tubules, most of them dissociate in alkaline urine. 
Casts are usually cylindrical in shape and long when examined under the 40x objective. These may be highline casts, which are transparent and slightly shiny casts with rounded or tapered ends. They may be found in healthy persons and hold no diagnostic significance. Granular casts are short casts filled with the large granules, pale yellow in color with rounded ends. Fine granular casts have smaller granules that do not fill the cast and can be confused with highline cast. Pus Casts or WBC casts are completely filled with leukocytes and are found in patients suffering from kidney infection. Fatty casts are shiny yellow casts with indented and distinct edges and rounded ends found in patients with severe renal disorder. RBC casts RBC cells may stick together and form red blood cell casts. Such casts are indicative of glomerulonephritis with leakage of RBCs from glomeruli or severe tubular damage. Vaxi casts are shorter and broader than the highline cast. They appear homogeneous and vaxi with yellowish tinge. Vaxi casts may be found in chronic renal disease or tubular inflammation or degeneration. Bacteria Bacteria are common in urine specimen because of the abundant normal microbial flora of the vagina in the female and urethral meatus in both sexes and because of their ability to rapidly multiply in urine standing at room temperature. Therefore, microbial organisms found in all but the most scrupulously collected urine should be interpreted with condition of the patient. Yeast Yeast cells may be contaminants or represent a yeast infection. They are often difficult to distinguish from red cells but are distinguished by their tendency to form buds. Crystals Crystals are formed by precipitation of urinary salts when alteration is in various factors like pH, temperature and concentration affect their solubility. The precipitates can be true crystals or amorphous material. Common crystals seen include calcium oxalate, triple phosphate and amorphous phosphates. Rarely crystals of cysteine, leucine, tyrosine which are found in special renal conditions can be seen. Quality control Internal quality control The controls should be run daily. Internal quality control can be performed using control strips or tablets or liquid urine control of two levels, normal and abnormal. In our demonstration, we will use the quality control strips. Each positive control strip is a firm plastic strip to which are affixed seven separate analyte areas. These contain one or more natural or synthetic ingredient that, when dissolved out of the analyte areas in a measured quantity of distilled or deionized water, produce a positive control solution. The negative control strip contains six separate analyte areas. The ingredients dissolve out of the analyte areas when the strip is immersed in distilled water to produce a negative control solution. These strips can be used to detect the performance of the reagent strips and also to confirm the user's ability to perform and interpret the test correctly. Adhere to manufacturer's instruction while storing the control strips. Procedure for performing quality control with quality control strips as recommended by the manufacturer. Take 12 ml of distilled water or deionized water in a test tube. Remove a control strip from the bottle and cap the bottle tightly. Place the strip into the tube and cap it tightly. 
Gently invert the tube back and forth for 2 minutes. Allow the tube to stand for 30 minutes at room temperature. Invert one more time, then discard the control strip according to the laboratory protocol. Now treat this solution as a control sample for testing the reagent strips being used in the laboratory. Follow the same procedure for reagent strips as described earlier. Follow manufacturer's instruction as reagents in the solution may have variable stability. Record reactions from reagent strip on the quality control log. In case of positive findings, strip results should be counterchecked by manual tests. The table shown on the screen shows the values of the positive and negative control strips. These values will vary as per the manufacturer and are provided in the control insert. Alternatively, the liquid control can be used directly for checking the urine strips being used in the laboratory. The liquid control is poured over each analyte pad using a dispenser tip so as to soak them completely. The color change is then compared with the chart and recorded. The values assigned to the lot number is provided in the control insert by the manufacturer. Proficiency testing Split sample testing should be done once in three months by two technicians as per NABL 112. Interlab comparisons should be done as per feasibility.